penetrates the veil, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what penetrates the veil? The mahi show. Oh, you that said one? one? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one you want to do? You practice some or what? Yeah, I've been doing that every day. And it, you know, I got this job where I was sitting at this desk, taking like, you know, money and stuff. And most of the time, people, they just pass through it because they got little cars. And so I'm just chanting this mantra all day long. And uh, it's like, wow, I say, wow, you know, this is, we really believe in this crap, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you say that to you? No, I mean, that's just like, you know, you, you say it after a while, you think, wow, you know, the Mahamaya. She's the Mahamaya. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's, she's a controller of it, too. <laughs> I don't know if that's, if that's the right view, but it's like... And that's why Rahu casts such a like powerful like shadow over people's minds. They believe in it. They think, oh, this is real, whatever Rahu's doing. Well, the thing is, to take birth in Maya, what makes you take birth in Maya? Desire. And what does Rahu represent? Desire. Desire. So we're here because of Rahu. We're here because of our desires. That's why Ketu, the opposite of Rahu, is the Moksha Karaka. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of desire. Interesting. Yeah. There's one more, since we're on uh, uh, Dorga Mantras. I also wanted to show this other Dorga Mantra here. Uh, Guruji... In Vedic Remedies, page 243. Anybody have Vedic Remedies with them? Oh, you guys are great. It's good to use these books, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and fully understand what's in them in okay. 243. 243. 243. It's the Dorga Kopa Vriksha Mantra. Kolpa Vriksha means the wish fulfilling tree. You were talking about this last week. Yeah. Say again? You were talking about this last week. Kolpa Vriksha? I wasn't. You, have you been listening to Visti's lectures? No. If everybody. They're on MP3 all the week. They're on. Just two of them are in English, though. Okay. There's a bunch of them in Danish. Oh, okay. But everybody in here, I definitely want you to download them and, and listen. Okay. Um, if you go to vyasasjc.org, mm -hmm. there's a link to where it is. Okay. There's a link to his classes, there's a link to Sarbani and Sanjay's classes, and there's a link to Narasimha's classes, mm -hmm. which are all online. Wish fulfilling. Guruji's are good most of the time they're in Hindi, so we only have some translations of them. Uh, Visti, he has two in English, so definitely listen to them. I tell you to listen to Narasimhas, but I haven't listened to them yet, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, he has a lot. He has a lot, yeah. Are they in English? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And Sarbani has some in English? Uh, both Sarbani and Sanjay both teach, and uh, oh, Hindi, they're mostly in Hindi. Yeah. The last one had a lot of English, but they're still Someone translated some into, into PDFs. PDFs. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty well written, actually. Pretty what? Well written, word by word. So definitely, but Visti's, definitely download Visti's and, and listen to them. Okay. Uh, and he talked about Kopa Vriksha. Mm -hmm. I didn't. So this is called the Dorga. Kulpa Vriksha Mantra. And it's Om, Hring, Shring, Kling, Durgati, Nashinye, Mahamaye, Swaha. Maha, Maya, Ye, Swaha. Kling, Kling, Kling. Om Hring 
shrink cling Durgati Nashinye Mahamaya Ye Swaha It's Maha Maya Ye So the first in, in Ma it's the first A is short the ha, it's long a, ma, long a, ya, long a. Maha, ma, ya, ye. So generally when I look at something like this, I practice really slow the first few times I say it. And then you slowly speed up. This is one of Guruji's favorites. Why? I don't know. <laughs> well, let's count. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So it's seven words. Dirgati Nashinye is one word. Dirgati Nashinye. Dirgati Nashinye is one word. Om, Hring, Shring, Kling. Dirgati Nashinye. Mahamaye Swaha. Swaha. Durgati Nashinye is one word. Yeah. Nashinye. Durgati Nashinye. How do you know it's one word? I'm looking at the Sanskrit. Everything. <laughs> 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 and it's a, it's a long A on the Na Shinye. So that's a seven syllable one. Or seven words. Mm -hmm. seven, seventeen I count. Count count again. Om Hring Shring Kring Dor Ga Ti Na Shin Ye Shin Ye. Yeah, it's Shin Ye. Okay. Ma Ha, ma, ya, ye, swa, ha. You get 17, right? So 17, that's fifth house. Fifth house. Seven words, 17. So it's seventh house and fifth house. And so where's where's the deity sit? The deity sits in the third house. The seventh to the fifth is eleven, right? right? And eleventh and the fifth, it's a third. So as we see, we have another mantra where Dorga sits in the third. And which mantra was that? Yeah. Oh, the Om Durga Durga. But what what was the mantra called? Oh. <laughs> What, what what was the mantra called? It has a name? Durga Monstrous. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the Jai. Yeah, but that was it. It goes from the fifth to the tenth. And the fifth to the tenth, and then the Devi sits in the third. The fifth to the tenth, and she sits in the third. It's the Jaya Durga mantra. Oh, Jaya Durga mantra. And that's called Jaya Durga mantra. It's called Jaya Durga mantra. Just like this one is the Durga Kulpa Vriksha mantra. Now, what does Kulpa and Vriksha mean? Uh, Vriksha means tree. Oh, tree. Yeah. Wish fulfilling tree. Yeah. So this mantra is like the wish fulfilling tree. So does it matter what's in a person's seventh house? <laughs> For what? For if you're going to prescribe this. And... Well, let's let's look. What's what's the seventh to the fifth house doing? Yeah. What is what happens when the seventh and fifth house are connected? Yeah. Well, it seems like the gains that would be offered to the seventh house would be found in the fifth. Okay.
Okay. So, like, in terms of relationship, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get you get love and creative intelligence and mm, love, right? Love, right? Yeah. And then when the when when, when the fructified in a marriage arrangement. Yeah. When yeah. when the uh, the fifth and seventh house are related, it's connected. It shows love marriage. Oh, love marriage. Oh, yeah. thank God it. It shows love marriage because it shows romance. It shows the fifth house is, is a house of romance and passion mm. relative to the seventh house. It's the gains of the seventh house. The seventh house is That's the arrangement. relationship. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's the gains made from relationship, which is Got all the, the, the love and enjoyment from that. Mm. And Dorga works with the Mu and Rahu. Oh. So when do you think we'd use this? It's not the telling us here. I'm just just from our own understanding mantras. If the moon's associated with either the fifth or the seventh, then or, it's not doing so hot. Okay, or or Rahu's associated with the fifth or the seventh. Or Rahu. Interpret that. And it's associated with the fifth or the seventh. So what's that mean? What's that mean? What about well, what if Rahu was with the A seven? What if Rahu was with the A seven instead oh. of the seventh house? Oh, Rahu's with the A seven. You know what it means when Rahu's with the A seven? There's a that strong desire for marriage or strong desire. For you can count. You can count how many relationships a person has, intimate relationships a person has, with the A seven. Planets conjunct or aspecting the A seven. You can count. You've, you've had this many relationships in your life, intimate relationships. If Rahu's with the A7, you can't count. It's too many. <laughs> it's so true. There's, you, can't there's, count you can't You can't count. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the moon and Rahu are part of Vajna. So, and UL and A7 are together with the moon. Wow. And it's, it's, yeah. Rahu's a really good night. There's, you, you can't <laughs> count. You can't I, can't. I try to figure it out. I can't do it. You have that? So, is it yeah. pseudo monogamy or is it a free for all? So, Sometimes. No, <laughs> so now, 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 why am I bringing why am I bringing that up? Well, because we're talking about wish fulfilling, and so that's you, what people think of when uh, this that, that's oh. the name of the mantra. I'm, I want you to just understand mantra shastra. Oh, okay. Fifth and seventh. That has to do with when fifth and seventh are connected. It shows love, marriage, love, marriage. romance. Why would we use a Dorga mantra associated with these houses? Are you are you getting where I'm going? When the person has well, problems with house, love, when Rahu is causing a problem with love and sexuality, oh. with relationships, with these areas. And this mantra is going to be very powerful, isn't it? It's going to be very powerful in other ways too, but I, I want you to be able to understand. That way you can well, see a mantra in a text and be like, ah, this is going to be perfect for... The fifth house is also um, the mind, isn't it? The mind. So this is going to be a good mantra to remove problems in the chitta field. Uh -huh. Confusions. Well, it will help clear the mind because you're choosing wrong partner. It, it'll, it'll... I'm speaking from experience. I need to purify the Rahu... So it'll help there. It'll help clear the mind in general. Right. One because it's a, a Dorga mantra. Two because it's connected to the fifth house. So it'll help clear the conscious mind. Clear the mind. But we're looking at all the different levels that it can work on, and so the more we understand the houses, the relation between those houses, and where these mantras are hitting, the more we can understand where these mantras are going to be uh, very beneficial. People are like, well, you know, as long as you just say a prayer and you have good intention, it'll work. Of course. But we want it to work fast. This is medicine. <laughs> right. Very direct. We want somebody to do the mantra and be like, wow, I got a new job. Wow, my, my relationship is better. Wow, it, we want, yeah. So I have got, um, I've got the seventh house and I have Rahu, and the mm -hmm. moon is in the fifth. So, so it's, really it's a great one. mantra. We're done with the wish fulfilling mantra, right? Yeah. The Are Copa Virtue. Not the yes. Okay. No, yeah. Rahu and the seven. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, download, listen to the class from last week too I with the Dorga that. Mantras. I'll definitely do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is, this is one of Guruji's faves. Uh, 
And Isn't next, that when it goes to third house, though, let's talk, can we talk about third house? So yeah, give you the so what's Dorgo, exactly? It's giving you the courage to handle the problems and be strong and cut through the oh, demons yeah. out, you know. Exactly. Okay. Where the deity sits is important. Where like, for example, we don't want Lakshmi to be sitting in the eighth house. No. <laughs> Unless yeah. she's another kind of Lakshmi. Well, in general. <laughs> so, so in this way, we it's important where the deities sit. Well, out of all the houses, what would you want to, I mean, let me, let me rephrase that. What would you want to have sit in your house if you don't want Lakshmi there, you don't want other deities there? It depends. Okay. We'll get, but you but definitely don't want your money in the eighth house. <laughs> <laughs> How about Rob in the eighth house? Um, well, yeah, but we're not, the, for the deity, we're talking about the deity of a mantra. Mm-hmm. When we calculate where the deity sits. And so for this Dorga sitting in the third, which is a great placement, we see she's sitting in the third for the Jaya Dorga mantra. So that's giving us, that's a victorious Dorga. She's conquering. Mm-hmm. Next week we'll do Navarna mantra. Navarna? 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next week, next week. Here, it's just in here is Navakshari Mantra. Navarna means the nine colors. Here, it's the nine syllables. Um, let's look at the, uh, here we have a Dorga Yantra associated with this mantra. This is a, one, of, one of the primary Dorga Yantras. And it's there, so we might as well talk about it real fast. Anybody know anything about this Yantra? I've seen it. I kind of I looked at it on a website, uh-huh. and I I drew it a couple of times, and it's very interesting to yeah. draw. Yeah. Do you I know mean, what it means? No, I just kind of, you know, kind of marvel at the symmetry of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so if we just lock you in a room with mantras, you'll be happy. <laughs> Anybody else? I will. Babaji, Baba Hari Das has a very big Dorga Yantra like this hanging on his wall. Yeah. And uh, I remember looking at that Yantra, and I didn't know what it meant when I looked at it. But then after I, after I started studying with Babaji, I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning to do sadhana. And I wasn't into any of the Hindu deities at that time. And... One morning as I was trying to get out of bed, it was so hard to get out of bed at 4.30 in the morning. I just said, help me, Dorga. And then I was like, Dorga? Who's Dorga? (laughs) So I started researching, and and then finally, next time I saw Babaji, I was like, ah, there's a Dorga Yantra on the wall. Big one, beautiful, three-dimensional. I like a lot of other ones that um, that weren't this one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's let's draw it so we can understand. So draw one triangle. We're gonna draw the. Uh, the down triangle. No, upward triangle. The center triangle. No, draw that. Draw the one towards the left. The top left, upward pointing. Mm-hmm. Just draw a triangle. So Dorga is, is composed of who? That's right. Okay. So if we start from the bottom middle of that triangle. So we have our one triangle like that. And if we start from the bottom and we head up and do the, the next triangle. Start from the middle of that bottom and go up and do another. So that the middle of, so that each one, sh- so that the first, the bottom corner of the first triangle is in the middle of the second triangle. The bottom of the second triangle is in the middle of the first. Do you see that? That's, and then from there, we take this, this little triangle that formed in the middle, and we go down and make another triangle. So we have three triangles intersecting there. Is that Brahma Vishnu Shiva? That's right. 
Is she the middle one? No, that's 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 the creation of Devi. Okay. Oh. Who's coming from their combination. I gotcha. So that's how they create Shiva. Exactly. And from there, the Shakti manifests through them. So we take these these outer points and we connect. Like that. So we have this point here, mm -hmm. the middle triangle. If you take the, those those points, and you draw out a line from there, out a line from there, out a line from there. So from Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu, their energy came together, mm -hmm. and the the root Shakti manifested, and then. The physical form came. How many points does this uh, star have? Nine. When Durga's worshipped her festival, how many nights is it? Nine, Nine nights. nights. So this is this is one of the primary Durga yantras. The nine-pointed star which is Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu, and the Shakti manifesting from it. What planets indicate the use of Yantra? Mercury. What makes you say that? Uh, it's right, it's right, it's good, good guess. Uchar Kal Rita associates Mercury with Yantra. <laughs> 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 wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> yes. That's what I looked up. Mercury and Venus, the Rajas planets, are connected to Yantra. Oh. So when they're involved, it's important to use Yantra. Mm. I have Mercury and Venus in the fifth and Yantra. Mm -hmm. so that's good for yantras, yeah. Good understanding of yantras. Good ability to work with yantras. It, they're the two rajasic planets. And as rajas, they're the things that are manifesting in the world. And so they help us manifest in the world. They help us create. Yantra literally means machine. So there are these machines that we're channeling the energy to create with. Okay, well, let me know, how do you know that doing yantras will help you? Like, what are you looking at? This up, this up here? There's a million different ways to use yantras. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying that they're primarily connected with Mercury and Venus. Okay. And so what does that mean? It means a million things. Okay. Mercury is our Rajas planet and Venus is our Rajas planet. What's the difference between their two Rajas natures? Well... Um, Venus is more oriented towards desire, and, and Mercury is... What is Venus creating? Venus is creating attachment. They're, they're both attachment. They're both, both. Rajasic planets. Mm. Venus creates physical beings. Physical beings. Living beings. Mm. Mercury creates inanimate beings. Mental. Not mental. He's work. He represents the career. When you go to work, you don't make babies. You go to work and, and make you money. make pots and money and <laughs> and and um, implements for people to use and uh, computer programs and living. medicines, non-living things. Mm -hmm. Venus, it's all about love, relationships, making families. You know the, the the root desire in us that we don't even understand that primal instinctual reasoning to be with another person is the Venus is that instinct to create more life. So taking this, so knowing that yantras are connected with Mercury and Venus, we see, we can derive from that based on those karaka reasons. With business, very important to use yantras. Mm -hmm. And at the level of, uh, and as I said, yantras, it's all about just like sound, you can do anything as long as you understand the sound. Yantras become very important with a business sign. People have images. On websites, people have images. 
you hand out a business card and you just have your name and a phone number, it doesn't really do too much. Everybody has a picture or some logo or something of that nature. That's a yantra. Mm -hmm. So to have the right deity, the right picture, the right image, this is, as well as a yantra. Mm -hmm. Every company has a sign out in front with these logos. These are yantras. Mm. Mm. These, this Dorgan Yantra, it's a spiritual yantra. We're doing something different with it, but in this way. So we're using them. To, and yantras can be used for everything as well. They can be used for protection. They can be used for health. They can be used every graha you can use them for its significations. But I'm just saying the strongest, most important things that indicate the use of yantra. <clears throat> Do the eight petals surround it, especially the eight petals? No. It's the, the heart chakra. The heart chakra, at the, at the inside, the core heart chakra has eight petals. The external heart chakra has uh, 12. If you look, Jagannath is surrounded by eight petals. 